Now that I have a couple driver reviews up, I wanted to go through my process of designing the crossover. But there's a lot to it. So for starters, I'm going to show you how to use my favorite software for designing the crossover, which is XM. In this video, I'm going to move very quickly. Um, there's a lot to pack into 70 minutes. It kind of assumes you know how to read frequency response and impedance graphs and things like that, and that you know what a capacitor is and a resistor and an inductor and things like that. I don't go back right to the basics. I'd like to one day, but for now, I just want to, for those who have a solid foundation already, I want to I get them going on this software and show you how to be up and running smoothly. So let's get started. The first thing you'll need to do is get driver files to use an XSIM. You can go to one of my videos on driver testing, find the link to Dropbox and download them like this, or find them by other means, like measuring for yourself. Open XSIM, and these are the three windows you get right off the bat. The working window is on the left, there's an amplifier right there, it's already set up for one watt. And we can drop in a couple of drivers, in this case we're using the Fountech ribbon and Vifa mid I recently measured and tested. And uh, we're just going to use the files that I have in Dropbox there to kind of show what can be done. Um, if you right click on the driver and hit tune, you can add those, um, those driver files. Uh, you need to enter in the FRD file and the ZMA file. This is just to decide how phase is going to be derived. Today I'm going to use the phase included in my measurement files that comes from SoundEasy. But you can have the program calculate minimum phase if you'd like. Here I'm just showing you that you can offset the response a little bit if you need. And I'll talk about inverting polarity and the delay in a minute. So here uh, we're just going to set up the VIFA mid as well. We're going to enter those FRD and ZMA files for this. This one it automatically found the ZMA file. Okay, here uh, I'm using the acoustic offset. Um, the the mid is actually going to be behind the ribbon a little bit. In here I've got about a third of an inch for that. That's just a, a guess though. Um, I can measure that with my software, but if you're not able to measure, then you know, you've got to make an educated guess. And we'll talk about that in a future video. I just added some curves, the uh, the drivers, so we can see. Here uh, are the um, components going in. You can use the spacebar to reorientate any of the components, which is what I was doing with the inductor. And uh, now that everything's hooked up, we're just going to adjust these components. Um, we can adjust the resistor through the component and the value of the component itself. As I adjust these, pay attention to the red curve. The blue curve is just a mess right now. Uh, we just need to get each driver curve kind of into rough shape before we can start worrying about the system curve, which is blue. I'm going to add an L pad because I'm just way out to lunch so far. I need to bring that tweeter level down. It's just way more sensitive than the mid, which is a good thing. <clears throat> so as I adjust it, you can see that uh, the red curve is now you know, coming into line with the yellow curve, which is the mid. Uh, I'm just going to remove that blue curve because it's just in the way right now. Um, you can see how extended that, that mid is, but let's put a high pass on there anyways. Uh, I'm using second order filters right now, it's a common thing to do, um, and I think it'll work. These drivers have so much bandwidth and overlap that I think I think it's a you know, fair place to start. So I adjust the... Um, <clears throat> the component values a little bit until uh, that blue curve. Now I'm paying attention to the blue curve until it kind of comes into the shape I'm looking for. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm you know in the ballpark here, so I can start uh, paying attention to things like the impedance, which uh, you can see is down at four ohms. So considering how cheap these mids are, I'm going to add a second one in series. I got to adjust the delay to get that acoustic offset proper again. And now I have two of them in series. I gotta adjust the filter values to compensate for the different load. And uh, when I do, you can see that now the uh, impedance is much better. Um, and uh, I'm just gonna work on that a little bit. We'll see if maybe I can fix up that uh, spot around 3000 Hertz, which is a little on the low side, though not a problem really at all. 
Um, you can use this feature here. You can short or open a circuit, um, which is really handy to see the difference. You can pay attention to what the impedance is changing and the frequency response, what's happening. I'm adding a window now um, and you know, under the add graph function and this is basically transfer function. It calls it electrical response but it's basically the transfer function of the speaker and you can see as I change the capacitor in series with that tweeter what happens to the transfer function. This can be really useful when trying to determine if you have enough protection on your drivers. I use this window a lot. Uh, now I'm just adding the power dissipation um, to look at resistors. I gotta crank up the amplifier to about 100 watts here. Probably more than the speaker will ever get to be honest, but let's just see what it can do. So that resistor 1 is absorbing a lot of power. So I'm gonna, instead of a 10 ohm, I'm gonna put two 20 ohm resistors in parallel. And you can see how much the power just dropped. Let's have a closer look at it. Um, there's driver 1, which is the ribbon tweeter and you can see uh, how much power actually reaches the ribbon tweeter with a 100 watt amplifier input and it's only about 10 watts and there's uh, with the um, mids in place as well keep in mind that's without a high pass on there so um, you know you can see how useful this is um, I'm just checking all the resistors I find that to be the most important now uh, let's look at phase um, this is also important and it has to do with that acoustic offset Inverting polarity is important to um, uh, feature for looking at phase. I'm going to add the phase response to each of the uh, driver files on the frequency response window so that we can um, pay attention to it. So you can see they're actually really close. Uh, right off the bat we have um, good agreement between the drivers which is why we're good, seeing good summation across the crossover point. And just watch as I play around here what happens to the phase graphs. Um, they move side to side a little bit, up and down in frequency as, as um, I make changes. And I'm going to add another pole to the low pass so uh, to make it a third order. And that will substantially change the phase. You can see it just lowered in frequency quite a bit. Um, so as I make adjustments, <clears throat> excuse me, as I make adjustments, you can see the phase change and um, get better or worse overlap. In the end, I think um, adding that third pole to the to the mids is just not necessary at all. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take it out. Yes, yeah, so you can invert the polarity right off of the right click on the driver. Um, so there you have it. Second order is working good. Good good deep null across the uh, crossover point and um, I check this often. This also affects phase, the acoustic offset, and this is just a shot in the dark. Unless you measure it like I can do, um, you just have to make an educated guess. We can talk about that in a future video. Okay, next I'm going to add a circuit block. This is a useful feature, although not totally necessary. I'm going to try to take out that little bump at 1500 hertz. So I just input um, a Q of 3, you know, centered at 1500 hertz, and I want to take it down about 2 dB. And these are the values it gives me. I add a ground component to make it actually function. And I can go back and edit it because obviously I put too much of one in there. Just the values um, weren't 100%. <clears throat> So you can adjust things and get it smoothed out and uh, you can see how effective it was uh, for this particular case. It won't always be so effective. And then you can also right click on it and you can uh, free up those components to make them separate so you can get in there and, and adjust them individually. Here I am opening and closing the circuit to see the difference between the two. And then you save your work um, so that you can close out the program and go back to it later. You definitely need to know how to do that. So there it is. That's how you use XSIM. I haven't included every facet of this program and every facet of designing a crossover, but it at least gets you going. And hopefully you can take some driver files from myself or somewhere else, 
shove them into this program and get a feel for what crossover design is like. In the future, I plan to go right from beginning to end on a speaker project, possibly even using the Fountech and the Vifa. And I'm also very soon going to get to a video where I show the difference between designing a crossover using XM versus driving, uh, designing a speaker using textbook crossovers, as I call them. So you're going to see very clearly why it's a bad idea to just go online, Google crossover design, and punch in a frequency and impedance, and it spits you out some numbers to use. Those don't work, and you're going to see why. So stick around for that video too. I'm sure you'll like it.